Hey guys, Dr. Gooden back again, and today we will take a deeper dive into Newton's first law. Okay, let's learn about biomechanics. Okay, so here on the screen we have Newton's first law, and I've written it out for you, and I'll just read it again. Every body perseveres in its state of rest or of uniform motion in a right line, unless it is compelled to change that state by forces impressed thereon. Now, I've also summarized this for you, and you probably have heard this before. Objects at rest stay at rest. Objects in motion stay in motion. Now, this is, of course, unless an external force acts upon it, but we'll get into that in Newton's second law. So, for now, let's look at an example, a couple of examples, actually, to illustrate Newton's law from a biomechanical perspective. Example one. Okay, so I'm going to draw out a diving board for you, and here's, here's the setup. There's a, a diving board, and maybe this is the Olympics that were supposed to happen, the Summer Olympics in Tokyo. They didn't happen, postponed till 2021. Thanks, coronavirus. <laughs> and I'm going to draw my diver here at the end. Nice skin tones for this diver. Don't worry, he's not naked. He has swim trunks on. It's a little bit boxy. Most likely the diver would be wearing a Speedo, but I don't think I could draw a Speedo very well. Okay, so this diver is about to jump off this diving board, and as he does, he will arc through the air. Now once this diver exerts a downward force on the diving board, and there's a equal and opposite reaction force, that propels him into the air, he cannot exert any more external forces on his own system. And the reason is because any muscular force that occurs during his dive when he's actually in the air is an internal force that uh, cannot change the overall motion of the system. It can change the shape of the system, but not the overall motion. Now we do know that air resistance and gravity are affecting the system, so technically Newton's first law is about a system that is free from external unbalanced forces. In this case, if we ignored um, air resistance and gravity, he would just keep going up, 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 and away, right? But because of those two, let's just assume that those are constant, because they are in this case, and he will perform a parabolic trajectory into the pool. Now, no matter how much he moves his arms and his legs, he cannot change that resultant motion. Because Newton's first law says, objects in motion tend to stay in motion, unless an unbalanced net force acts upon it. Now, if he moves his muscles while he's in the air, he can change the shape of his body, and he can change not his trajectory, but the way his body is moving, uh, the, the way the system is shaped as he falls. So now I'll draw him in the middle of his front flip. So let's see, say he's tucked into a tiny ball. We're looking at the concept of conservation of inertia, which we'll learn about later. And drew his eyeballs just to get you oriented with which way he is facing. And of course we can't leave him naked. There are his swim trunks. And I'll go ahead and draw out the rest of his trajectory down into the pool. So this diver would follow that trajectory. No outside forces other than gravity and air resistance are acting upon him. So we know that he would be following this parabolic trajectory. Okay, let's move on to example two. So in example two, we are going to imagine a huge asteroid hurtling through space. And if it's hurtling through space, um, let's try to name all of the forces that are acting on it. Well, there's no gravity, and there's no air in space, so there's no wind resistance or air resistance. So this asteroid will continue moving in a straight line through space until it meets some other external force, right? So here's the line, and I'm going to make some nice little stars. And maybe I'm going to make a planet. I 
Let's give this planet a ring. Fill it in and then give it a ring. Nice. Okay, that looks like space. So this asteroid is hurtling through space and because it does not encounter any other resistance, it continues in that straight line. Okay, but now let's change the scene. Let's say that it's not in space, but maybe this rock is hurtling through the Earth's atmosphere, not as a meteor coming down from space, but let's say something launched it, like a giant trebuchet launched it through the atmosphere. What are the forces that would be acting on it? So let's clear that scene. I'm gonna draw some trees. Draw out a nice sun to show that it's on Earth. Okay, and I'm gonna draw in the forces. So now we do have gravity acting on this rock. And we also have air resistance. And we no longer have this straight vector showing this rock's velocity or displacement um, or movement through space. Instead, it will be parabolic. And it's parabolic because now there's these two external forces acting on the rock after it was thrown. We have gravity pushing down and air resistance pushing back against it. So this rock, if it were launched, wouldn't continue straight like it would in space where there are no other forces acting on it, but instead it would be launched up and then come back down in a parabolic fashion and probably create a giant pit in the ground, as you can see. Okay guys, that was Newton's first law. In a little bit more detail, one biomechanics example, one example from basic physics. If you have any questions, let me know down in the comments and I would love to answer your question if I can. Now, Newton's second law talks about what happens to the system when forces begin to act upon it. And if you want to know what, uh, and if you want to know more about that, click on over to this video. Otherwise, check out other videos in this biomechanics playlist. And as always, thank you so much for watching.